He's asking for patience. Governor Ige said in a press conference yesterday that traveling inner island without a COVID pretest could happen by July 4th. And he remains concerned about the possible use of fake vaccine cards. Joining us this morning with more is the Lieutenant Governor and the state's COVID-19 liaison, Dr. Josh Green. Good morning, Doc. How are you doing this morning? Good morning. I'm well, thank you. Now, first off, the governor said that the state is working with two companies, Clear and Common Pass, in piloting a vaccine passport. What's been the biggest challenge with this? Uh, the biggest challenge is uh, having companies like that get access to large amounts of records that are inside our state. That's why we also have the additional First Vitals company that is terrific and will be working with them. That's that's the crux of the challenge. You have to be able to get data from the BAM system, from the hospitals, from uh, the Hawaii Health Information Exchange. There's lots of data to be gotten. It's my hope that we'll have a simpler system for inner island travel for our local residents, and that would be perhaps just using the card. So there's lots of things to tease out here. I understand the governor is quite conservative. Uh, I'm less conservative. I think we can do it safely. Now, Hawaii residents who are vaccinated and want to travel a lot of them are disappointed to hear about that July 4th timeline. What hope can you give them? Well, we'll be working on that uh, this morning and tomorrow. There's lots of uh, work being done by our internal group that manages a lot of the day to day on this. So uh, there's no reason that we can't have a system that will be safe and effective, at least for inner island travel uh, in a couple weeks. The Gov still has to make that determination because there has been a fair number of cases on both Maui and Oahu. But in my mind, I look at us, us as one state, really one state, which means that though I don't like cases anywhere, it doesn't really make that much difference to us whether a couple cases are in a rural part of the Big Island versus somewhere on Oahu versus somewhere on Maui or Kauai. We still have to care for those people. We still have to provide everyone health care. We still have to make sure there's not a bigger outbreak. So it really is a different way of thinking than I would approach it. Now, Honolulu Mayor Rick Blangiardi said he is dead set against the city going back into Tier 2, and it appears that modifications will be made to prevent that. Would you agree? Uh, tough call. The main thing that Mayor Blangiardi uh, should argue and needs to argue is that the difference between now and before is the hospitalizations. At the time when the earlier tiers were put into place, we were dealing with numbers in the hospital, like 150, 207. We even tough touched 318 people in the hospital at one point. As of yesterday evening, we had 43. So only 20 people were in the hospital on Oahu, and that is very few cases. That's fewer cases than most other ailments. So I think Mayor Blangiardi is trying to bring a realistic approach to the new reality, which is fewer of our kupuna are sick, and many more young people have been testing positive, but they're not severely ill or in the hospital. And so as he works out those details with Gov, I'm sure he'll make that case. Now, what's been the biggest factor that you see regarding the increase in cases on Oahu and Maui? Is it a certain age group or maybe a certain industry? It's people 18 to 44 who feel a little bit safer and more invulnerable because there's so much more vaccine that's been done. We've done over three quarters of a million shots now, and so a lot of people just feel like it's not as big a deal. Uh, that's been very good to protect our vulnerable people, our kupuna, our healthcare workers, our essential workers. But people who are out having larger gatherings, parties, and so on, are spreading the disease. And then there were some clusters, of course, on Maui. One church had a big cluster. The prison had a big cluster. So I would say if everyone wears masks, socially distances, the numbers will come down. If we avoid large gatherings, the numbers will come down. And no one will have to worry about the tiers changing or any of that. Meanwhile, we'll touch a million doses given by May 1st, 1.3 million doses by June 1st. And then none of this will matter because we'll be in the... How can people who have had the actual virus get a travel passport? They carry the same immunity as a vaccinated person. It's a great question. Right now, and I've been there having had COVID, you get an exemption. What we'll need to do is have a checkbox that if you actually had COVID, you will then, instead of uploading your test, need to upload just your uh, positive test that you had back in the day. That gives you immunity and it should get you coverage and clearance too. Desiree Turner is asking, how is it ethical to force everyone to get the vaccine to enter and exit the island? Uh, it's not ethical, and that's not what we'll do. Uh, we will not make anything mandatory, and we will not make entering in, into Hawaii, travel between the islands, contingent on being vaccinated. Really, just we ask people to get a test, and if they 
If they don't get vaccinated, they'll have to get a test. If they don't want to get a test, then they quarantine. But there will not be any uh, mandatory vaccination on people from my perspective. And this from Richard, along with relaxing travel restrictions for those vaccinated, the CDC has just released new guidelines for cleaning services saying regular detergents are fine. What do they base their decisions on? What they do is they're doing very vast surveys of people who have caught COVID and whether or not they've used any special precautions. In this case, they've checked cleaning companies, agencies, and so on, and they don't feel that there's been any difference in infectivity or uh, possibility of catching the virus from, say, clothes that were exposed to the virus. So basically, your regular detergents are sufficient. Don De La Cruz, what is the plan for those not getting vaccinated or getting the vaccine passport, will they be able to travel? Yeah, they will. Uh, a couple things. First of all, eventually all of the restrictions will be dropped away once we have herd immunity and or once we just um, don't see much in the way of cases in our state. Uh, before that, you don't have to get a vaccine. Like I mentioned before, you can do the pretest, which is a 72-hour pretest, and travel that way. And I think that that will probably also get loosened up as we go forward. I'll tell you what, though, everyone's making a big deal out of it, um, but this vaccination card's pretty sufficient. It just says vaccination card. It's not a passport. It's nothing fancy, but it does have some important information that you got immune, and I'm very hopeful we'll be able to use that and basically integrate it into safe travels. It's the future for most of the country, but we will still not make things mandatory. I don't think that would be fair. Okay, and the final question from our viewers, Kyle. The mayor says he wants to modify the current tier system. Can that be done? And who made the original system? And what was that based on? Uh, the original system came from the previous mayor. It was somewhat arbitrary. States all across the country were putting systems together, and they were trying to base it based on their populations. It was a very conservative system. It was also made in, in the context of the, the spikes in the virus. We had a lot of cases over Christmas, New Year's. We had a lot of cases. Back in the summer, that's when people were panicky about it. And also, we had huge hospital numbers. Now our hospital numbers are down 70 or 80 percent. Even though we've had some cases, it's younger people. So I think it's sensible to continue to do these systems. And we do have to trust the new mayor to use his best judgment for us. All right. And if there are any kind of changes to the tier system, we, of course, will let you know. Lieutenant Governor Josh Reed, thanks so much for joining us once again. You bet. Thank you.